of today's message, building eternal mansions. And I'm believing God for everyone listening that God will use today's message to bless you and your family. Amen. Bless your loved ones and everyone that is connected to you. Amen. Because you will learn from today's message the importance of building eternal mansions. Amen? Amen. I want to welcome you one more time in God's presence. Amen. You are all welcome in Jesus' name. Can I hear a loud Amen? Amen. I say a loud amen. amen. Praise God. Building eternal mansion, we are in a generation where people are more interested in the things of this world. Nobody cares about the, the source of the things that we love in this world. The people of the world are more interested in the end product, what God has created, the beauties of the world, the pleasures of the world, the things of the world. That's what today most people are more interested in. Amen. But when we look at the Bible or when we look at the word of God, God enjoins his people God encourages his people to build eternal mansions. Eternal mansions means things that have eternal value. Praise God. Hallelujah. Things with what? Eternal value. If you have 10 houses, God forbid if we pass on to glory, those 10 houses on earth will have no record in heaven. If you have 20 cars, limousines, Rolls Royce, Bentleys on earth, and we pass on to glory, when we pass on to glory, none of those things will have any record in heaven. When we have dozens of designer clothes and shoes and everything that this world can offer us, when we pass on to glory, guess what? None of those clothes, shoes, bells, trinkets, gold, silver, diamonds will have any record in heaven. Building eternal mansions. But I tell you what, if you had 20 cars, if you had 10 cars, if you had two cars, or you even had one car, and that one car, you dedicated that car to helping the poor. You set aside that car to picking people to charge. You set aside that car to helping people that have no car because they need your help. On the last day, that car that you have set aside to help the poor, for in building God's kingdom on earth, that car will have a record in heaven. I'll take it again. I'll take it again. If you have 10 cars or 20 cars or one single car, and that car has been used to help the poor, that car has been used to advance God's kingdom on earth, that car has been used to support the needy. On the last day, that car will have a record. That's the only time the beautiful things of this life will have a record in heaven. When you use it to advance God's kingdom. When you use it, that which God has given you to help the poor. The underprivileged, the oppressed, those that are in need, then it will have a record. Let's go back to the Bible. Matthew chapter 19, verse 28. I'm talking about building eternal mansions, things that have eternal value, investing in things that have eternal value. Desiring things that have eternal value. Spending quality time 
amassing things that have eternal value. Matthew chapter 19. Praise God. Matthew, my, my iPad, or I think I should move by it. This is slow. Where are you doing? Father, I will give you all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, son of a good. Matthew chapter 19. Have we all found it? Verse 28. Look at what Jesus said. And Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye which have followed me. Amen. Amen. You that has what? Followed me. In the regeneration. Regeneration means when all things are created new again. In the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, you also shall sit upon the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Verse 29. What does it say? And everyone that has what? Forsaken houses. Brethren, sisters, father, mother, wife, children, lands, for my name's sake shall receive what? A hundredfold, and shall also what? Inherit everlasting life. Now take note. Two things I want you to know. The first law is to follow Jesus. When you, did, when you are ready to start building eternal mansions, mansions that have eternal value, number one is to follow Jesus. Following Jesus is not following friends. Following Jesus is not following families. Following Jesus is not following the things of the world, the examples of the things of the world. Following Jesus means submission to the will of God. That's number one. And that's why Jesus promised in Matthew 19, 28. He said, I verily say unto you, you that have followed me in, in the time of regeneration, when all things shall become new, all Christians are looking forward to the time of regeneration. When Jesus will come. When sickness will be banished. When pain, suffering. Everything we face today on earth. When they will all disappear. Every child of God looks forward to this time of regeneration. When the Son of Man shall be seated in the throne of his glory. You also shall sit upon the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes. Promotion. That's what God has promised. Promotion. Now this is heavenly promotion. Now, earthly promotion. Verse 29, and everyone that has forsaken everything God mentioned, houses, brethren, sisters, father, mother, wife, children, land for my name's sake shall receive on earth a hundredfold. Now listen to me. What are we fighting for? What are we chasing after? What do we think is bigger than this promise from God? Is there anything bigger than this promise? Sitting down with Jesus in the time of regeneration, when all things are made new, the new heaven, the new earth, as the Bible has God promised in his word. Then a hundredfold of everything that we forsake. When the Bible says forsake, God is not talking about the things you have attached your life to and has made higher than God in your life. 
What are you attached to? What have you held them to? What do you prefer much more than God? And that's what Jesus is saying. Forsake. 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 Sister, brother, friend. Some people are more attached to the things of this world than they are attached to the things of the Spirit, the things of God. And God, through his word, Jesus is saying, if we can forsake these things, give them up. I gave you a story last Sunday of the man that brings a lot. Akim, brother Akim. He's a lawyer, a big time lawyer in the United Kingdom. And I talked about what happened. This man was always drinking, as I gave you the story, falling on the streets. Then he would mix his, I think he used to mix his own with drugs or something. I couldn't remember this story fully. Until the day, just like today, I was, the word was spoken. And that was the day he said, you know what? Forsake, forsake. Then there are things that are overweight in my life that I need to forsake. You got to think about your life this morning. Is there things in your life that you need to forsake? For God's glory to show forth. For God's power to show forth. For God's presence to show forth. You know what's, what makes prayers unanswered? Sin. If you see your prayers are not answered, then they sin. Amen. Each time prayers are not answered, one of the reasons why prayers are not answered is what? Sin in our lives. And that's what Jesus is saying. Number one, follow me. Number two, forsake all in order to gain all. That's why God promised a hundredfold restoration. When you purport in your heart and say, you know what, Lord? I've heard the message this morning. I need a change. The moment you make that decision, guess what? The change you have long awaited or you have been waiting for for so long will now come. Merely making that decision. Merely making that decision. Amen. Genesis chapter 12 verse 1. Let's look at Genesis chapter 12 verse 1. Genesis 12 verse 1. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible said in Genesis 12 verse 1, And now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Go thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto the land that I will show you. I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. There is a time in life that we need to forsake things that we love so dearly because they are not in consonance with the word of God. Amen. There are times in life we need to make harsh decisions in order to change our stories. There are times in life we need to take drastic measures. Abraham was called out of the oars of the cows. God told Abraham, leave the oars of the cows where you were born, your family, everything that you know, leave them behind and the world follow me. Amen. Amen. I remember when we were very young, we used to think life was all about, you know, parties, clubbing, you know, all time, you know, this, you know, youthful delinquency. But as you begin to grow in the word of God, as you begin to get closer to God and begin to hear the word, that's when we began to learn that life is not just party club, friends, you know, and all the, all the pleasures of life. Life is much more than that. And that's what, the, that was the lesson that God taught Abraham. Leave everything behind and 
follow me. What are you ready to leave behind today? That's a message you will need to take home. It's a question in this message, building eternal mansions. What are you ready to leave behind for Jesus? As a child of God, what are you ready to leave behind? What are you ready for, to forsake to follow Jesus? What are you ready to abandon? Amen. John chapter 2 verse 13. Let's look at John chapter 2 verse 13. John chapter 2 verse 13. Thank you Jesus. John 2. John 2 verse 13. I'm going to read it. Let's have a look at it. And the Jews Passover was at hand and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Verse 13. Verse 14 says, And found in the temple those that sold oxen, sheep, and loaves, changers of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cord, amen, a whip, in other words, a scourge of small cord, he drove them all out of the temple, and the sheep and the oxen, and, the, and, the, and, and poured out the changers money, and overthrew that, their table. And said unto them that sold those, take these things hence, make no, make not my father's house a house of merchandise. And his disciples, the last verse, remember that it was written, the zeal of thy house has eaten me up. Look at what happened in the time of Christ. In the temple, businesses were conducted, things were sold. Amen. Transactions, money exchanged hand inside the church. And when Jesus came into the temple, what did he do? He made a scourge, a whip, and chased them out. And told them, my house, my temple, is never a place of merchandise. Today our life is the temple of Christ. Today our life is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God dwells in us, our body. What do we do with our body? It is time to make us call the whip and begin to whip out all the impurities in our body in order to see all of God. In order for all that God has planned and purpose for our life to manifest. It is time to look inward because sometimes we continue to lambast Satan. He kicks Satan on the head, kicks Satan on the leg, kick him on the waist, kick him on the back. Everything is Satan. But what about us? It is our life that we need to look at. Because maybe there are transactions in our temple that Jesus has not allowed. We are carrying out transactions. Look at the world today. The pubs are filled, the church is empty. Transactions. Amen. The club, nightclubs are filled, the church is empty. Transactions. The businesses are, are buzzing, are opened, the church is empty. But do you know one thing? If you look at every, it is only Christianity that abuses grace. There's no other religion. I will ask anyone to tell me because I have researched this. There's no other faith that abuses grace except Christians. Grace has been made available to us. But the Bible says, for what sin to cease. Grace abounds for sin to cease. Grace abounds for change to come. Grace abound, not for sin to continue. That's what the Bible says. We enjoy grace. Why do we enjoy grace? Because the, 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 the punishment that we are due for, somebody has already served the punishment. The punishment or the penalty that if we are due to pay, somebody has paid that penalty. It is called grace. 